you got the call. Welcome to the big leagues, kid. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the call-up presented by Triple Play Fantasy. We are back here for week 14. D-Mendy and baby Huey in the house tonight. Mike, how you doing? I'm doing good, David. Uh, Glad to be back for another week. I respect your dedication to keeping the baby Huey nickname alive. I'm equally relieved it hasn't caught on outside the show. But uh, we're excited to be back this week with another great guest, and he's been out here grinding putting out that prospect content and some interesting lists, and I'm happy to have a chance to talk with him. Yeah, the bandana on means baby Huey's out in full effect. Bandana or sunglasses, any type of accessories that he's here. And also here is our guest tonight, a great person in the prospect world. You know we only bring the best, and we're continuing that tonight. This man is a project manager and analyst, serve, survived the 80s, uh, which is a test, in it, a test in itself, I mean, to be able to – Survived the 80s, a very difficult time. All about the three Bs, baseball, Bitcoin, and Batman. We'll have to ask him which is his favorite Batman. <laughs> He's a writer and editor for the Dynasty Guru, and most importantly, the creator of ScoutTheStatLine.com. It is Ross Jensen in the house tonight, ladies and gentlemen. How's it going, man? I'm doing really good. Thanks for having me. Of course, uh, we talked before the show. That you got the hat, the Oakland A's hat rocking tonight, getting me pumped up. Before we get started here, can you tell us what Scout the Stat Line is? Yeah, sure. This is a website that I started with my colleague, uh, Jordan Rosenblum, at uh, the Dynasty Guru when we met in 2019. And, and you know, he put together, he, he's done some fantastic research on, on prospects in, in regards to uh, major league translations. So taking their stats and translating to what it would look like at a, at a major league level by based on uh, average player performance as they reach that level. Um, He also has done some really good research on aging curves and he built this nifty little calculator. I think this was 2019. And, you know, I was like intrigued by this thing and it it really kind of fits with my way of thinking about players. And so, you know, we just kind of struck up a conversation. I was like, why don't you just apply this to all players, you know? And I had brought a little bit of a, a data background with me, uh, building out data models and stuff like that, mostly using Excel, but other kind of analytical uh, softwares as well. So we just went to work on seeing if we could do it. So we built this early uh, little data model and we, we plugged all the players in. And, you know, since since then, I think we, we just kind of had an idea, well, we need some some place to put this because just putting it on the website every time on the Dynasty Guru, every time that we wanted to talk about something was just a little extra work. And we thought we could bring more information than we were able to, to write about. So uh, on Scout the Stat, stat Line, we'll, we'll do like daily updates on our prospect list. So our, our, our leaderboard, for instance, is updated daily. Um, and it's just the whole idea is to bring you the most up-to-date information. So it's in contrast to what you see for traditional like top prospects lists where, you know, there's a lot of manual ordering. This is all done just through data analysis. So the strength being we can get something out there right away, push a button and it's out there. You know, there is some limitations too, because we're not going in and we're not actually massaging any of the results or changing anything. And so sometimes I think I get a little confusion from from some of our users where they're saying, ah, so-and-so shouldn't be ranked number seven or whatever. And it's like, well, to change that means changing the model. And there's been a lot of thought and a lot of effort that's gone into that. So just to just to clear that up. So in case anyone has questions, I'm happy to talk about the model. But you know, it's not me actually going in and placing these guys in, in rank. I, there's no way I could do that for 2,000 players on a daily basis anyway. I think you're muted there, David. 
I'm such a rookie. Goodness, my wife was <laughs> vacuuming. Uh, if you're li- <laughs> wow, uh, if you guys are watching on YouTube, I have Scout the Stat Line pulled up, and we are looking right now at the top projected prospects, and it's great. They have the order of their prop prospects here. They have historical comps. They have just the change in rankings, WRC pluses, batting average, OBPs, home runs per 600, plate appearances, stolen bases. I mean, they have everything here. This is just one section of the site, and uh, you went into great detail about what everything is on here, so I won't go ahead and, and add to all the great stuff you already said, but if you can, if you can see on YouTube, this is very legit, uh, just all these different parts of this site. So make sure you guys check that out. Again, that's scoutthestatline.com. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and let's jump into what the call-up is. And we've got our four sections of the show, leading off with our MILB Players of the Week. Starting off with the hitting side of things, Noel V. Marte, shortstop for the Seattle Mariners and their organization, one of the top prospects in all of baseball, and somebody that you don't get shocked when you see him destroying the minor leagues, Ross. And uh, again, just over his last 10 days, just continuing to mash. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to be able to talk about Noel V. Marte a little bit. Um, but where I want to start is, oddly enough, I've always kind of thought he's a little overrated. Um, you know, you, you started seeing him, especially at the beginning of this season, cropping into some top 10 lists, and I felt that was a little high. But he's really kind of validating it over the last uh, week, 10 days, as you mentioned. He's got great power-speed combo. He's a big athletic guy. Um, and over the last seven days he's number two on our hot list for projected peak wrc plus so that's a testament to how strong his performance has been and over the last 30 days he's number three on that list so he's been consistently strong for uh, a month now Uh, and during that period he's got seven home runs six stolen bases Uh, that's what you want fantasy baseball obviously 25 runs scored, 19 RBIs. Yeah, he's he's been on a heater. And I think if you were able to pick him up during a slow start, you're probably happy. Uh, if you can get him now, it's probably still maybe a good opportunity as he's as he's lost some of that luster. Um, but, you know, if he, he's going back into the top 10, that's you're probably going to miss your opportunity. So you better jump on it quick. Yeah, I mean, another great prospect for the Seattle Mariners. Their top prospect right now, according to most sites, got a ton of power, especially from the pull side, and just somebody that I'm wondering if he stays at shortstop. I know the uh, defensively, maybe there's some questions there, but the bat, there's no questions about it. And Mike, I know you're very plugged into the Seattle Mariners. It seems like Ross is a little bit down on him in the top 10. Where do you have him? Well, like I said last week, I, it's been a little while since I've done an official update. Uh, he would have dropped down for me, but I'm not someone who ever had him as high as, as the other people originally. So I, I guess I'd have him somewhere in between 20 and 30 right now on a dynasty list. Okay, fair enough. So we got two very many people plugged into prospects here, and Mike and Ross both saying, hey, not top 10, but you know, definitely inside that top 30. So just keep that in mind there. All right. Our next player we're going to talk about is Bo Naylor, catcher in the Cleveland Guardians organization over his last 10 days, hitting near 500, three home runs and seven RBIs. And just, Mike, on the season, these Cleveland Guardian players, one of them we'll talk about a little bit later, their position players are starting to come along a little bit here for this team. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Bo Naylor is someone I don't normally talk, I don't normally talk about catchers a lot on fantasy shows, but this is the younger brother of Josh Naylor that I, we've seen doing some good things in the major leagues right now. Uh, the thing that caught my attention really was the 429 OBP, 502 slugging, the 10 home runs and 12 steals from a catcher. That's rare to have a, a double digit in both those from someone who's capable of playing catcher. Uh, he's been young for his level coming up as well, so he struggled last year. Uh, he's a great case study for organizations, you know, assigning players aggressively. And then he struggled as a 21-year-old. Comes back this year as a 22-year-old and looks like he's above the level. So he's up to tri- AAA, and he's gotten even better since he's moved up there, too. As you said, the Guardians are in the midst of a transition, so they're definitely looking for players that can step in and become regular. Uh, 
far as the scouting grades go, coming into the season, he had a well below average hit tool, which I think is wildly inaccurate. Uh, I would I would give him an above average hit tool, plus raw power potential. That might be a little bit much, but at least above average. And then he's got a decent amount of speed. I'd say he's at average speed, which is notable for a catcher. So he has improved defensively behind the plate, but there's still like a risk he moves off the position. But he hasn't played anywhere else this year. So long term, you're looking at a guy who could potentially be a top 10 catcher if he's capable of chipping in double digit home runs and steals and doesn't kill you in batting average. So that's definitely something to keep your eye on if you're looking for help at the position. Just again, another great catcher in the crop of catchers that are on their way up to the big leagues. Again, that's Bone Naylor. Let's talk about another player here. Let's talk about Daniel Mateo, outfielder for the Texas Rangers. On the season, his numbers aren't going to pop out at you, even though they're pretty good. A 280, 331, 758 slash, nine homers, 37 RBIs, 36 runs, 28 steals is pretty nice. But what I wanted to highlight was on Saturday this past week, he went four for six with three home runs and seven RBIs. This is a player that's not even on the top 30 on MLB.com's Texas Rangers top 30 prospects. So I don't know if I want to say he's going to be somebody that long term has a big impact, but there is he is somebody that we need to highlight for a player of the week with that. And one thing I do want to also add is that he had no home runs in 2019 three last year, already up to nine this year. He's been really working on getting some more power in his swing. And again, the nine home runs already this season have shown that, the 280 average. And he's somebody that maybe with this newfound power could become more of a household name for the Texas Rangers and, and the organization here. Right now, only in, in single A ball. Uh, but just going from 2021 to 2022, the again, the average is better. The ISO went from 0.096 to 146 this year. The Ks are down 5 6%. Uh, just again, seems like he's making the right strides to maybe make some noise later on down the road for the Texas Rangers. All right, let's go to the pitching side of things here. Starting off with Gavin Stone. We talk about a lot of Dodgers prospects on this show, and for good reason. They have so many great ones in their system, and another great pitcher here with Mr. Stone just over the last 10 days between high A and double A, putting up great numbers, Ross. Yeah, so he's somebody I've been watching. Um, you know, as it is, I like to scout the, scout the stat lines a little bit too much sometimes, and it's harder with pitchers because you, you need to look at some of the intangibles. Um, but what I'm seeing on Gavin Stone is he was a fifth-round pick in 2020. Uh, he was excellent in his last two seasons in college. Uh, I'm surprised he dropped that low, but he was with Central Arkansas, and I think that, you know, that – People can tend to overlook people coming from those smaller schools. But he does throw pretty hard, sits between 90 and 94. Sometimes he can get up there in the mid, higher 90s. So uh, he's a guy I think you definitely want to keep an eye on. And statistically speaking, he has been excellent in the minor leagues, especially this season. As you can see, the 1.34 ERA, high A and, and double A. So he's definitely something that I'm someone that I'm looking to pick up where I can. And I know I have a couple mid-season drafts coming up here and he's going to be somebody I'll be targeting yeah jumping from kind of the low 90s fastball in college to now it can touch 98 and now he's got a really good slider mid 80s slider that seems like it's uh helping against right-handed batters right now and again if you can throw hard and have a good slider you've seen pitchers succeed at the major league level and he's could be the next one to do that long term Ross do you think What's his ceiling? Uh, number three starter, or do you think he could be a front line of the rotation type of arm? Uh, I don't know that I would I would give him the stuff gradings to say he could be an ace, but I, I, I think a, a two is a realistic ceiling, and a three is probably a, a more realistic outcome. Okay, fair enough. Talk to Ben again this time. Gavin Stone, last week we talked about Mr. Uh, Bobby Miller, both two great pitchers for the, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Let's go to our next player here. And this pitcher, D.L. Hall, one of the more well-known prospects across Major League Baseball. And right now with uh, with Grayson Rodriguez on the shelf, the top pitching prospect for the Baltimore Orioles, the lefty has been putting up some great numbers over the last 10 days. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've been trying to focus on some players we haven't covered as much, but Hall was just too dominant to overlook in this period. Uh, he seems to be rounded in form coming back from an injury scare last year. And uh, we had Dylan White on a few weeks ago, and he did a great job breaking down, uh, you know, like all the all the intangibles and different things that he can say better than me even. But uh, scouting grades wise, it's hard to get a consensus, but he's got a double plus fastball. Everyone agrees on that. And Maybe a plus slider and plus changeup. There's might be a curveball involved in this as well. But the command is the elephant in the room. Basically, if he can get that to a level where it's acceptable against major league pitchers and isn't a problem, then he could be a frontline starter and one of the best lefties in the majors. Otherwise, he would profile as like a high-end reliever that would dominate as a closer, or or could be worst case be valuable as like a high strikeout bulk reliever. There is a bad outcome here where he's like a bad starting pitcher and they just keep rolling him out there and he gets you a bunch of strikeouts and it kills your ERA and whip. But I still think there's multiple ways he can be valuable for fantasy teams, even if 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 that if that's not the outcome that happens. So um I do think he's close to making his MLB debut. It's just a matter of how the team wants to deal with him. Uh if he wasn't injured last year, he'd already be up. So uh, if you if you are looking for someone with K upside that you want to stash uh, that's close, he's definitely on the short list for me right now. Especially with the Orioles in surprising contention right now. Uh, he's somebody I'm sure that they're going to want to get up there and have the best arms they can to compete down the stretch. Uh, so that very enticing DL Hall there. This next player, I got a shout out, our buddy Christian Crespo, a somebody that you've seen on this show, very smart prospect of mine and a buddy of ours that you uh, you guys all know. Ty Madden, starting pitcher for the Detroit Tigers or in their organization. On the season, a 2-6-1 ERA in just over 72 innings, 73 Ks, so a little over a K per nine. Great whip at 1.01. He's gone 13 consecutive, uh, that should say innings, not outings. So for those that are watching on YouTube, we do definitely make mistakes here. 13 consecutive innings without allowing a run. After five shutout innings in his last start, nothing flashy for him. Uh, 16 games this season, a, a K rate just above over nine, walking, you know, two and a half per nine, home run rates acceptable across the board, just very average uh, and a lot of statistics. But he's somebody that doesn't getting a lot of shine. And in high A ball, he's just doing what's been asked of him right now. And somebody I do think, you know, just keep an eye on him. The, the obviously the Tigers don't have a lot of great pitching. And maybe he can wake his way up through the minor leagues and, and be a back end arm. I don't see him being an impact arm, but just again, somebody that I, I felt like deserved highlighting 13 consecutive innings without allowing a run is definitely something we want to make sure you guys saw on this show. All right. Notable promotions, players that have been getting the call, or we have players getting a bump up in the minor leagues. And we saw a few of them. Corbin Carroll going to Reno, Triple A team for the Arizona Diamondbacks, one of the top, if not the top prospect in all of baseball right now. Vaughn Grissom going to Miami, or I'm sorry, Mississippi, Double A team for the Atlanta Braves. And Nolan Jones is supposed to say the the uh, Cleveland Guardians, and I actually put St. Louis Cardinals. Again, two mistakes for me, three strikes, I'm out of here. So, uh, and then one player we talked about on this show. Maybe he he's definitely, if not number one, top three most mentioned player in the 14 weeks we've done this show. And that's Asteri Ruiz for the San Diego Padres. He did get the call today, and he's in their lineup. I think 60 steals are right around there on the season in the minor leagues. It's He's been absolutely just incredible. Ross, any of those four players that we brought up that you would like to highlight here? Well, I, I mean, if you're going to give me an opportunity to talk about Corbin Carroll, I'll, I'll definitely take that. <laughs> uh, in my opinion, he's the the best prospect in baseball already. So I, I think, you know, it, it, we're, we're probably going to see a cup of coffee at the end of the year. I hope we do. Um, no guarantee, but for sure, early next season, I think we'll be seeing him. He's got power, speed. Guy's just got natural talent. And I've been thinking – you know, since last season that he was likely the, the next number one guy who's going to be one of those guys anyway. Um, you know, one of the front runners, I, I shouldn't just say it so definitively, but he was actually leading on Scout the Stat Lines uh, prospect leaderboard. He was leading prior to the season. He just didn't have the eligibility. So that was something I was definitely keeping an eye on. And as soon as he passed the threshold, you know, he was hurt all last year. 
um, he was, he's been at the top and hasn't missed a beat. So he's definitely a guy that I'm really interested in. Those guys are all very good players that you mentioned though. So, you know, uh, Nolan Jones, I, I'm not sure that I see him being like a star level fantasy player, but he could be a guy that gets on base. He could be a, a good fill in for your teams too. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, all those, like you said, all the prospects are great there. Corbin Carroll, Nolan Jones. And again, Asteri Ruiz is not on the graphic, but he is in the, the Padres lineup today. I hope, I hope he sticks. That you know, would be. And Vaughn Grissom, I, I think he's a little underrated still. And I think he has been dating back to last year. I, I don't know exactly what the bias is there, but I just get the feeling that, that people don't like him and he's better than people think. Yeah. Good. Well said. Um, Let's go to prospect watch. Let's talk about players that we're keeping our eye on as they rise up the minor leagues here. And kicking it off with our first player, Emmanuel Rodriguez, outfielder in the Minnesota Twins organization, low A ball. Ross, I I don't I'm I'm in the closet twins fan, even though I really don't my fandom is these days has waned a ton. But I love to see another young outfielder. The twins just keep seeming like there's tons and tons of them in this organization. Yeah, Emmanuel Rodriguez, I'm really glad that I get an opportunity to talk about him um, because he's been one of our uh, scout the stat line darlings, and I always like to highlight them. Uh, he's got uh, a ton of power, and and his on-base ability is, is really, I think, what drives a lot of his ranking. But sneaky speed on the season as well, as you can see the stats that are flashed up, more walks than strikeouts. He's... Uh, 19 in single A. Unfortunately, he suffered a season-ending injury, so we won't get to see how he performed through the rest of the season. Uh, but if you have an opportunity to, to add him, he's definitely somebody you should you should look into. Um, on Scout the Stat Line, I just want to highlight some of his successes. He's number two on our top projected prospects list, and he's number one on our prospect leaderboard. And the difference between them is the, the top projected prospects list is, is meant to be more of kind of a stable, uh, traditional type of top prospect list, uh, except it's not being manually ranked. And then the leaderboard is more trying to highlight the guys that are really uh, success stories from the year. So he's passed the plate appearance threshold. He's not gonna go anywhere on it, though he is injured and we won't get to see if he was able to keep that up through the whole season, but it was a great start. Yeah, and he'll hopefully carry that into next year. Again, that is Emmanuel Rodriguez. Baby Huey, Angel Martinez, another Cleveland Guardians player. You are on your Cleveland Guardians grind today. High A uh, shortstop slash second baseman for him. What about him has caught your eye? Well, I've been high on Angel Martinez going back to a couple years now. It's good to see him around him to form. I still think he's a sleeper in Dynasty to a degree uh, because of you know, the single-digit home runs and steals. But uh, counting grades-wise, he's got an above-average hit tool, average power plus speed. I think he's going to end up being at least above-average in all phases of the game. So we're talking about a well-rounded middle infielder who's going to be able to contribute across the board. I don't think he's going to be like a superstar type guy, but a really solid player. Um, as of right now, in high A for age 20, he has a higher WRC plus than Zach Veen, Robert Hassel, Noel De Marte, Obi Mayo, all the same age and the same level. So he's not talked about a lot, and I think it's because of the counting stats, but he's got a really high 14.3 block percentage, a low 18.7K percentage. He's flashing the power 200s about where I like to see a guy is at least showing signs of it. And so... If you're in a league where people aren't really high on Angel Martinez yet, I think you should he's another guy that I just like to get a hold of on my teams before he gets into the upper levels. And then I, I think he'll start costing more. That's the goal of this show is to get you guys ahead of the curve here, learn about these players before everybody else does. And it's a good call with Angel Martinez here from Mike. This player is a little bit more well-known, but gosh darn, do I love him. I love him. He's my favorite pitcher in the minor leagues right now. Andrew Painter, starting pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies in their organization. Now, I believe he's in double A or he's, uh, I have to double check. I know he's with the Blue Claws. I forget if they're single A or double A. But man, 
he has been absolutely crazy on the season. A 174 ERA, 46.2 innings, 79 strikeouts, a .92 whip, five scoreless innings since his return from the IL. This is a guy that can touch 97, 98 with his fastball. Somebody that, again, obviously tons of great strikeout stuff. I believe he's even passed Micah Bell, who I think was ahead of him for a little while, even earlier this year, depending on where you look. But he's got a true upper 70s curve, mid 80s slider, and a 6'7. He's very just, uh, his presence on the mound, I think, is, is something that's going to be a big thing at the pro level. Obviously, when you're that size, the, the distance from you to home plate becomes shorter with that, with that uh, length of his arm coming towards the plate. And I think if, if potentially he gets even stronger, maybe he could even get that fastball up another tick or two. He is somebody, I think he's consensus somewhere like in the 40s to 60s, depending on where you look on prospect list. But I love Andrew Painter. And I think if for some reason he's not mainstream, uh, he you guys need to know his name because he's just absolutely dominant. Ace absolutely. upside? I think so. I, 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 I mean, you guys are a little bit more plugged in than I am, but just for the little bit I've seen, I really do feel like this could be the ace of the Phillies staff in a couple of years. I agree. Oh, there we go. All right. I feel better now. <laughs> All right. Who's next? Our last segment. Who is next that we think is going to get the call? And let's kick. Actually, you know what? Before we get to this player on screen, let's just go with the one that's had multiple appearances really quick. Miguel Vargas, who is now getting some outfield reps for the Dodgers. Still hitting between double um, A AA and triple A this year. A 293, 377, 871 slash, 13 homers, 61 RBIs, nine stolen bases. I honestly don't know why he's not up by this point. It's more of a question to you, Ross, because you this is your first time on the show. Do you know why he hasn't gotten the call yet? It seems like he's doing everything right, you know, in the minor leagues right now. No, probably because he plays for the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think that they have they don't have the room for him. So I mean, they're gonna have to find a way to get him in the lineup. I just figured, you know, with the Chris Taylor injury, and then there was a, another injury. I forget which who it was, uh, but you were there were two injuries. I thought one of them would get him in there, and uh, unfortunately, not. Uh, he's hopefully by next show. You'll, but we'll yeah. never know. Well, I can't. I can't speak definitively on this, but I've read he's kind of got some some defensive questions, so that might also be part of what's holding him back. Yeah, that's fair. I mean. Uh, Dodgers definitely will value their defense. So that's something that maybe you'll have to work on a little bit, or if they stick him in left field, you know, just I guess, depending on the injuries or how they're going to shake out here. Let's go to a player that I don't believe he's been talked about on the show, or if he has, it's maybe been only one other time. Curtis Mead, a third base slash second baseman in the Tampa Bay Rays organization between double A AA and triple A this year, he's been doing really well. And Ross, you think he could be the next guy for this Tampa Bay Rays team to be on their roster? Yeah, I, I mean, to be honest, this might be more wishful thinking than, than reality, knowing how the Rays move. Um, but they have shown a willingness to be aggressive with, with uh, really advanced hitters. And I think Curtis Mead could qualify for that. He's just, he's a hitting machine. He's hit everywhere he's been. He doesn't strike out a lot. Uh, apparently, from what I've read, he's a lot bigger looking than it looks like he is in his bio. So, I mean, you, you got the size, you got the strength, you got the ability to hit. He doesn't strike out a lot. He walks at a decent enough clip. Um, last year, he had a 911 OPS. This year, combined across double A and triple A, he's at 924. So, he's improved that. Uh, in fact, while his numbers are a little down since being promoted to AAA, he's walking more than he's struck out. I think that's a good sign. I think if he starts clicking, I think there's a really good chance that we see him called up. Uh, I don't know where he's going to play. He might be all over the map. Uh, I saw Baseball America's recent update of their top 100, and they put him at 28. And that's the most aggressive I've seen him ranked. And I've, I've just posted something on Twitter just a few days ago, just before I saw this ranking, saying that I still felt like he was vastly underrated. Uh, typically, I was seeing him more in the 80, low 100 area. So now I think we're we're going to start seeing some movement on it. So now's your chance to get him. Curtis Mead, hopefully sometime soon we can see him up with the Tampa Bay Rays this season. 
Baby Huey, last player on this list, Pedro Leon, plays a bunch of different positions in the Astros uh, minor leagues right now for AAA. You think he could be next for this Astros squad? Yeah, Pedro Leon's the first time we're on the show, I believe, uh, just because I, I tend to focus a lot on hit tool. and But he's, he's bringing that power speed that you like to see. So it felt like a good time to bring him up. Outside of Esteri Ruiz and Corbin Carroll and AAA, there really isn't a better power speed option in AAA at the moment. Uh, you can see on the screen there, he's got excellent walk rates, 14.2 uh, to 28.4% K rate is the question. He's showing a little bit of power, and he's got speed. So 29 stolen bases on the season in the upper levels, that's a good sign. He's capable of playing outfield shortstop, and I was surprised to see that he's played at five games at second base this year. So the Astros are really testing his defensive abilities to see how he can get in the lineup. Uh, it may be difficult to crack that lineup every day because they can't really afford to have like a rookie figuring it out on the job during a, the middle of a pennant race. Uh, but this is a guy who had more prospect pedigree than in louder tools than Jeremy Pena. So he would certainly become mixed league relevant uh, with his power speed. If he, if he got enough, if he was able to make enough contact overall, the scouting grades look like a below average hit tool above average raw power and plus speed. So if you missed out on stashing one of those speedy guys who are close that I just mentioned, uh, I think Leon's a good option right now and he's already 24. So, He's not going to be down in the minors much longer, regardless. All right. Astros lineup. I can't imagine getting much scarier, but here we go. Pedro Leon potentially making his way in that lineup this season. That's going to wrap us up, though, for week 14 of the call up. Ross, I want to say thank you again for coming on the show. We truly appreciated you and all your just brilliant prospect information. Can you tell everybody again where they can find you on Twitter and all the great stuff that you're doing right now? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Ross Jensen, 12. So I'm like the 12th one that joined, I guess, apparently. I don't know why I picked that, but that's my bio. So find me, hunt me down. Uh, you can also go to my website, scoutthestatline.com, and you can find me that way. Uh, follow me on Twitter there. You can just go to thedynastyguru.com, and occasionally I'm posting articles there. I'm also the editor there, so like you'll, you'll see my name floating around plenty there, too. Again, a great, again, Thanks for great. having me by the way. <laughs> of course, man. This is a blast. And yeah. it's always really cool to talk with other great prospect minds. And again, you're one of the best ones out there as well. And uh, we're looking forward to, to have you back on sometime if you're ever interested. So absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Mike, anything you would like to say before we get out of here, your fan tracks article, you want to plug that and anything else you want people to hear? Um, no, that's it. Basically just look out for my next fan tracks article. Uh, once again, got a little slow pace with social media, but I'll pick that up and start giving you guys some more names to look at. And uh, yeah, just again, appreciate everyone who's supported our show and all the great guests we've had on and um, really happy to do this each week. So looking forward to the future. Yeah, it's been great. And we're again, week 14, we're grinding week 15 coming up next. Next week, we'll have another great guest for you guys with a bunch of more prospect information. But until then, we'll catch you guys in the next one.